Our next speaker is uh, Steve Chin from Emory University. So Steve has done a lot of uh, exciting work in uh, statistical genetics, including his work in uh, International HapMap uh, Consortium. So today he's going to talk about the identification of non-coding risk variants uh, associated with the complex diseases based on multi-omics profiles. Steve. Thank you, Julian. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. And today I'm going to uh, tell you uh, briefly about uh, uh, our recent work on these specific non-coding risk variant detection. So as you know, in the past decade, uh, thousands of GWAS uh, studies have been conducted and tens of thousand variants have been identified to be associated at a genome-wide significant level to uh, hundreds of uh, different disease and uh, phenotypes. So the, the, the big surprise here is that a uh, majority of these variants are non-coding. So that's a, a big problem for us. Because um, uh, like 10 years ago, before ENCODE, uh, our understanding on the non-coding region is uh, very limited. So the, the, the huge challenge here is uh, um, what is the biology behind this uh, trait-associated um, non-coding risk variant? And uh, related to that, how can we identify this non-coding risk variant? And because of the, um, the hard work of um, you guys, now the situation has changed uh, dramatically. Now we have a lot of uh, um, epigenomics data from ENCODE and other consortiums. So recently, uh, several methods have been emerged to leveraging this uh, newly new resource and to do risk variant annotation, uh, such as uh, GUAVA from Sanger Institute and the CEDD from Jay Shender's lab and the Agen Genome Canyon and several other methods. So today I want to introduce you to a, a method we recently developed, which is called the DIVINE disease-specific variant annotation. Like the name suggested, um, our method um, build a unique model for each different disease and phenotype. So it's a disease-specific, unlike all the um, method I mentioned previously. So um, in this method, we use the, uh, the trade associated SNPs identified by the GWAS training data. Uh, specifically, we use the data collected by the associated result browser uh, as a training data. And uh, uh, as features, we use uh, more than 1,800 uh, epigenomics data from the INCO consortium and the roadmap epigenome. And this included ChIP-C data, DNA-C data, and the FIRE data, and so on and so forth. So the challenge we, we face uh, in this project is that uh, we have a huge collection of uh, multi-omics data, and many of them are collected, right? Same factor from different cell types and uh, um, same um, and a, a different factor from a, a related factor from, a, from cell, cell types. And another challenge is that uh, the training data can be very limited. For some of the diseases, we have uh, fewer than 50 uh, known variants. So it's a huge uh, uh, P greater than N problems. And also the data types are quite diverse. So um, our workaround is the uh, following. So we use uh, uh, mach some machine learning techniques like feature selection and ensemble learning. And very importantly, uh, instead of using the final indicator as whether a variant uh, overlap with a peak, we use a continuous recount to as the features, uh, which we believe uh, improve the performance of the method. So some results, we compare to four different methods, uh, Guava, CAD, uh, CDD, uh, Egan, and Genome Canyon, and uh, we use a cross-validation on 45 different disease phenotypes from a certain result browser, and we also conduct a, a test, an uh, independent test, 36 disease phenotype from uh, GRASP, uh, a, a, another database, uh, GWAS database. So these are um, a, a, a partial list of the disease we studied, so you can see it's very diverse, and the number of variants can be as, as many as uh, um, several hundred and as, as low as uh, 50. So these are some of the results. These are the uh, OC curve from uh, four uh, selected disease types, and you can see our method, which is a black curve, outperform the other method. And overall, um, this is uh, the performance of our, our method. This is an uh, area under the curve, uh, the ROC curve. And you can see um, it's not bad. So the, uh, all the uh, 45 disease uh, give me a uh, AUC greater than 0.6, and uh, some of them are, are, are as high as uh, point, uh, low, lower 80, so uh, l uh, higher than 0.8, so which is uh, uh, pretty encouraging. And we also uh, did an independent test on these uh, graph SNFs. So these are the comparison of four disease and uh, again, our method seems to be uh, slightly better than the competitors. And, and also, um, um, 
out of 36 disease, in 22 of, uh, of them, uh, our method shows um, uh, the best results. So um, you might interested to know which features are important in our studies. So these are the list. Uh, these are the number of features identified from each of the disease. The, the, to the very, um, this end is uh, uh, body weight and followed by stroke. And uh, to this end, th these are inflammation. And uh, interestingly, um, you can see the, the number of features uh, differ a lot from uh, 600, more than 600 to as low as uh, uh, 50. And this number is highly correlated with the number of variants uh, discovered, not surprisingly. And also, interestingly, um, we found that uh, um, the histone marks actually the most uh, informative features among all the uh, features we included in the, uh, in the test. And uh, uh, open chromatin, which actually come in second. The first one is uh, um, histone mark. So several histone marks uh, are showing on top. So in summary, um, our study sh um, demonstrates that the disease-specific risk variant identification is feasible. And, uh, but to do that, we need to proceed with caution. We need uh, some advanced to do learning techniques. And our method, uh, divine, seems to outperform competitors for the, uh, on our term. And also, the uh, same to me, uh, is that advantages to using a read instead of peaks uh, as the features. And uh, we found that the histone mark are the most informative uh, class of features. So uh, some acknowledgement, uh, most of the work uh, done by Li Chen, a graduate student, which is graduating, and also a collaboration with uh, Peng Jin's lab. So thank you very much. Uh, any questions for Steve? Jason. Talking about Mike Beers or Ogre's method? Okay. Have you compared to methods such as FGWAS and Painter? They seem to be working on a more similar problem than the other methods you compared to. We, um, we didn't compare with uh, Joe Pickers' paper. He has a uh, American Society, uh, American Journal of Human Genetics paper, right? And his method is more on um, identified GWAS variant, if I understand correctly. But we can talk about it offline later. Okay, so, so that's w that was my question. So does your method is comparable to Mike Beer's or Ogre's method? They pr predict the causal variance in disease? Like um, we, we um, uh, probably, we didn't look at other methods beyond this four. Okay. This four seems to me the, the state of art in this field right now. All right, cool. Thanks. Thank you.